Hello, everyone. Uh, I wanted to make a video for this week's critical thinking lesson uh, to kind of go over the assignment, um, talk about some strategies for writing it, some of the trouble spots that students hit. Um, so let me share the screen with you guys real quick, and we will go over this week's announcement. Um, so Last week we learned about groupthink. Um, the discussion on groupthink was really cool. Thank you for participating. Uh, this week we're learning about how to construct effective arguments and we are working on the argument construction assignment, which will be due on Sunday the 7th by 11.59 p.m. Um, I provided a sample in the announcement. If you get a chance to look at it, um, the sample kind of lays out exactly the structure and organization of how this assignment should work. Um, and we'll go over it together in just a minute. So uh, just a quick overview of this assignment as a whole, what you're gonna be doing is choosing a specific controversial issue, um, then generating a list of premises about that issue, then eliminating some of the weaker premises um, and explaining why you eliminated those. Then you're gonna be writing three different argumentative paragraphs based off of the premises that you came up with. And then finally writing um, a paragraph that discusses which of those three previous arguments is the strongest and why. Um, so let me see if I can bring up the actual assignment prompt. Um, momentarily. Okay, so here's the assignment prompt. Um, again, it's just going over the same stuff that I just talked about. Uh, you're welcome to choose your own issue or choose one of the sample ones here. Um, just make sure that your issue, if you choose a topic, make sure it's controversial. Make sure it's something that um, there are at least two, two sides to, preferably more than two sides to. Um, remember when you are building your arguments that you should be building one argumentative paragraph for the second one against, and then a third of your choosing. I would strongly recommend that the third of your choosing is either another for or another against. Um, don't write like an in-between wishy-washy argument because that's not really an argument. Um, take a look at the rubric as always with every assignment. Take a look at the grading rubric so you know exactly what you're being graded on. Um, five points for the issue and list of premises. So that means that you have a clear issue identified at the top of your paper and that your list of premises are well written, that they are complete sentences with proper punctuation. For some reason, students see the word list and think that they can write um, like two words. And the problem with like little fragmented statements is like statements like that is that it's unclear what your actual argument is. Um, Make sure that there are premises for both sides of the issue because you're going to be writing arguments for both sides of the issue. Um, there are six points available for explaining why you eliminated uh, two premises. So as you generate a list of 10 premises, some of them um, are not going to be good. And some of them are going to be cool. Um, that's fine. Uh, eliminate the ones that you don't think are that great and explain why. Just like a short couple sentences. Um, then you're going to be writing the three argumentative paragraphs, and there's 15 points for the arguments, five points for each paragraph. Um, then six points for writing the paragraph that explains the best argument, and then three points overall for writing level, avoiding mechanic mistakes like point of view slips, formatting, things like that. Okay, um, so let me look at the sample with you guys real quick to just kind of make sure we're all on the same page. Okay, so here's the sample that I came up with a long time ago. Um, here's my issue clearly defined. Everyone should be a vegetarian. It's a controversial topic. Um, obviously with people who will agree, disagree, people on, you know, all over the spectrum as far as this. Um, and that's what you want. You want something that people are not going to agree with you on or a statement that has, you know, people, share lots of different opinions about. Um, that way you have lots of things to write about. So my issue, everyone should become a vegetarian. Then I have a list of premises. Um, I tried to come, tried to balance my list of premises so that some of them 
kind of favor yes, people should become vegetarians and some of them kind of favor no. Um, I then explained my eliminations. Um, I did short paragraphs here. You can just do a few sentences. And then I set up my argumentative paragraphs. Um, one thing I want to talk about um, that will help you with your paragraphs, help you make stronger arguments is try not to tie together premise after premise after premise into an argumentative paragraph. If you notice here, a single premise like this first one, vegetables, fruits, grains, and other non-meat products provide all the nutrients humans need to be healthy. That's a huge concept. That's a huge claim. I'm claiming that you can get all the nutrients you need without having to eat meat. Um, that on its own could be, that on its own is the topic of books. That on its own could be an entire large essay. It certainly can be its own argumentative paragraph. Um, so what I mean by try not to try not to tie together lots of premises is try not to create a paragraph that says everyone should be a vegetarian because vegetables, fruits, grain, and other non-meat products provide all the nutrients humans need to be humans need to be healthy. Also, killing animals is cruel and unnecessary for human existence. Also, industrial farms are horrible uh, institutions that treat animals cruelly. All of those things are their own like topic sentence. Think of your premises as topic sentences and then stay focused on that topic sentence for the whole argument. Build upon that singular idea in each argument as opposed to tying them, tying lots of different premises together. Um, now that I'm like looking at my samples here, I'm not even sure I did the best job of that, but just try to keep that in mind. Um, so then if you look at the actual argumentative paragraphs, I have good argumentative paragraphs here where I'm using sources and research and reason. Once again, um, this is not about necessarily your opinion, or if it is your opinion, it should be your opinion based on research and evidence and objective reasoning, not your opinion on how you feel or what your just your opinion is, right? It needs to be more um, objective research-based um, considering multiple aspects. And again, like we did with the experience and expertise assignment, this is all about being able to argue multiple sides to the same issue in order to understand why people who disagree with you disagree with you. Um, it's usually not just because they're dumb. Uh, so best paragraphs, the last step of the assignment. A lot of students miss, miss this step entirely. It's not hard. All you gotta do is just write a paragraph that looks back at the previous three and explains which is the strongest and why. Please don't write a new argument here. Um, all I'm asking you to do is look back and say like argument three was the best because it has the best use of research and it appeals to emotion or something like that. Um, that's really it. This assignment isn't too hard, but there are a lot of steps to it and students lose points most often by just kind of missing a step or um, yeah, just kind of overlooking what the actual assignment is asking you to do. Um, I hope this video helps you guys. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, uh, have a great day.